We're going to install Virtual Smart Zone version 5.1 on Windows Hyper-V. Hyper-V is running on Windows Server 2012 R2. Before we get started, we're going to cover just a couple things to ensure that our installation is successful. First, it helps to have a working knowledge of the Hyper-V platform. This can help you troubleshoot any issues that may arise during the installation process. We always recommend that you review the release notes. You can find great information in the release notes such as access point support, features, and bug fixes. We need to download the Hyper-V image for Virtual Smart Zone. We can do that from the support portal. We also have a getting started guide that is great at helping us navigate the installation process as well. We're going to utilize RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol to access the Hyper-V server. We just want to ensure that those ports are open and that we have connectivity to it for that protocol. When we do the installation, we're going to follow the AP count range from 1 to 100. The requirements are at least two virtual CPUs, 13 gigs of RAM, and a 100 gigabyte hard disk. So let's start the installation. We're connected to our server. We have Hyper-V Manager open. So we're going to right click on the server and we'll go down to New and Virtual Machine. This is going to launch the new Virtual Machine wizard and it'll navigate us through setting the Virtual Machine up. So we'll click Next. First thing, we need to name our Virtual Machine. We're just going to name it VSZ Demo. Now, Generation 1, Generation 2, Virtual Smart Zone doesn't need any features from Gen 2. So we're going to utilize Generation 1. We'll go ahead and assign our startup memory. We're going to use 15 gigabytes. We'll give it a little bit of a pad. Now we have one virtual switch available in this environment. You may have multiples, so you'll need to verify that. But we're going to use the one that we have available here. Then we'll click on Next. Now we've already downloaded and unzipped our virtual hard disk file, the .vhd file. So we're going to go ahead and use the existing virtual disk. So we'll browse, navigate to that file, open it. We're going to verify what we have real quick, just make sure it's the right file. You may have multiples. We'll click Next, review the summary screen, and then we're going to click on Finish. All right, we'll click on Finish. This is going to create our virtual machine. The virtual machine is now available in the virtual machines window. We can see it here via Z demo. So the next piece, we're going to go to it, right click, and we're going to go to settings. Now we're going to verify a few things. The first thing that we want to ensure is that the memory that we assigned is there. So we see that we have 15 gigs. That's perfect. Next, we need to verify processors. It only assigned one. So we're going to increase that to two, which is required. So we'll go ahead and increase that by clicking the up arrow. Now we're going to click on apply. Next, I want to verify that the hard disk we assigned is there. That's the file that we used. Everything looks fine. So we're going to check the network adapter. I just want to verify that it's there again. Looks good. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. Great, our virtual machine is there. It's been configured. So now we need to turn it on. So we're going to go to the VM. We're going to right click and we're going to click on Start. This is essentially powering the virtual machine on so it can boot. Once we've done that, the next piece, we're just going to go back to that VM. We're going to right click on it and then we're going to click on Connect. Now, Connect is going to connect us to the console. We'll see the boot messages. Once this finalizes, we'll start the setup. All right, at our login screen. So default credentials are admin and admin. Once we reach that point, we're going to enable and then we'll use the default password of admin once again. All right, so we're going to type setup and hit enter. Now this is going to initialize the setup process. We can set the profile and IP information. So for this profile, we're going to use high scale for this installation and we're going to confirm that. Now we're also going to use IPv4 only, which as you can see, we had a little typo here. It's not going to be 11. It's going to be one to select v4 only. All right, so we're going to choose manual. We're going to use a manual IP address here that we can Configure. Now these IP addresses need to be tied to our virtualization environment, so it has to be within the same subnet. You'll have to verify this on your side. Okay, so we've given it an IP address, subnet mask, and a gateway, and DNS servers. So we'll go ahead and confirm this. Now what it's doing is it's telling us, these are the settings you gave me before I'm applying it. Now I'm applying it and I'm restarting the network service. When this network service restarts, as you can see here, it's going to show you what's assigned to it. The service has been restarted. We're ready to go. Do you want to accept these settings? Yes, let's accept them. Now we can use this IP address that we assigned to connect to the GUI. Okay, we've connected to the GUI. So now what we need to do is we need to configure our new cluster. So we're going to give our cluster name a name of VSZ demo. The controller name will be VSZ demo. And then the controller description will be VSZ demo as well. And we'll click next. 
All right, final piece, we're gonna assign some passwords. So we're gonna assign an admin password and enable password, click next. Now we see our confirmation screen. If we have anything that we need to change, this is the time to go back. Otherwise, if we're okay with it, we'll click finish and the setup will start. Now, something to keep in mind, this piece takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It is a great time to get up, stretch your legs, grab some coffee, do some of your other tasks waiting for you. When you come back, the controller should be up online and ready to go. Okay, so once you've completed the entire setup wizard, Smart Zone's done, it's set up, you're going to be met with a screen where it's finished, 100% done. Now you have a link here you can redirect to Smart Zone's web interface. Click on that, it'll redirect you to the GUI. Then you log in, and once you're logged in, you're going to be met with your new controller. It's there, it's up, it's configured. Now, if you see any messages about the clusters out of service, that's normal. It happens with Smart Zone installations. However, this one is ready to go, it's up, it's online, and it's ready to be configured. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus Support Portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.